Hello again, we meet on the journey. For the last couple of weeks, we have been talking about the seven spirits that impact our lives. The children of Israel on their wilderness, on their journey, they face them literally face to face with these tribes that we mentioned. And at the same time that we in our spiritual journey towards perfection with our Lord Jesus Christ, we also face these spiritual attacks of these seven spirits. And we also discuss the detrimental outcome of uh, the impact of these uh, spirits in our lives as we encounter them. So today, uh, I just want to talk about what remedy is there for us to overcome it. Now that we have become conscious and cognizant about the existence of these spirits, and we know that these the, the spirits can make an impact to our lives in a bad manner, in a negative manner, and when such spirits come on our lives, what action can we take? What can we do? Are we to just uh, kneel down and pray to the Lord? Uh, Lord, save me from all this trouble. I know that I have identified this is the spirit that works and looms in my head and looms around me. So what can we do in order to overcome this? What does the Lord say about overcoming it? Yes, that we need to pray. Prayer is very important. We need to spend time with the Bible. We need to have a clear understanding as to what the Lord wants us to do in terms of turmoil, in terms of having encountered these spirits. And what can we do in order to overcome it? So the answer is very simple. The answer is already there in the Bible. Because this Bible is contains everything that we need to know and we need to uh, in, internalize the Word of God, the questions, the answers, the solutions, how to overcome them, the prayers, the method, mannerism, the modus operandi, everything is there in this Bible. So as I was reading through, this is what the Lord personally revealed to me. I'm just sharing that with you. So I reiterate uh, once again that uh, I'm not a qualified theologian to explain this, but this is my personal revelations that the Holy Spirit imparted uh, when I was going through certain tribulations, certain trouble and uh, certain persecution impacted by these spirits and what I went through is what I'm sharing with you right now. So the answers to the seven spirits that we talked about, we talked about uh, in Exodus 23, the, uh, the spirit of Amorites, the spirit of uh, Hittites, the Perisites, the Jebusites the Canaanites and the Hevites, the impact of those spirits. And for each one of, and also the Gergeshites, and each one of these spirits has a lasting impact as well as a detrimental impact, which is come to destroy you and to, to steal and kill. It's like Satan comes to the evil one comes to destroy, to steal and kill. The same manner these the, the impact of these seven spirits that we talked about predominantly are meant to have that kind of a detrimental impact on your life. So how to overcome it, as I was talking about, is found in the Bible. Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 2 There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The seven types of spirits which is emanating or originating from the Lord. So we read just now, there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and branch shall grow out of his roots. And verse 2, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So if you count, there are seven spirits emanating or originating or springing from the Lord. So I believe that when the Holy Spirit revealed this to me, I believe it is uh, seven spirits to directly combat, to apply against the seven spirits that we discussed the Hevites, the Jebusites, the uh, Amorites, the Gergoshites, and so on and so forth, that we discussed seven spirits in Exodus 23 and later on. 
of the Gurgashites as well. So the seven spirits can be uh, equally defeated one by one by the seven spirits of the Lord that which fall upon a person. So this is the prayer that we need to make. This is how we need to combat and overcome the, uh, the spiritual battle. Yes, you can go to the pastor, you can go to uh, a church, you can from morning to evening fast and pray. If the Lord prompts you to do it, please go ahead and do it. But without understanding, without the knowledge of what we are trying to do and what we are trying to overcome, doing all that is futile. So we need to have a clear understanding. That's, that's once again knowledge and understanding of the Lord that we are talking about, the seven spirits of uh, the law. So let's go through one by one and try to apply against each and every evil spirit that we encounter, that of the, the spirit or the Holy Spirit of the Lord, that what he imparts to us. So let's take the first, uh, the spirit that we discussed, the Amorites. The characteristic of Amorites, if I may reiterate and revive your memory a little bit, is to speak against and murmur the uh, against the children of God. And I told you, the Amorites, they murmur, they always have something uh, against something. And they give bad counsel to another person. And whoever they meet, they have nothing but bad, nothing but uh, negativity to spread. So when the Amorites spread this negativity and the bad counts, Lord combats that with, if you have a clear understanding of the spirit of the Lord, of his counsel, then we can overcome. That is how we can overcome. Because the word will have to combat the word. That means the negativity is to be combated or else to be overcome with positive. So if you look at the counsel, the spirit of counsel, as in Isaiah 11 verse 2 says, the spirit of counsel is found in the whole counsel of God. In Acts uh, chapter 20 verse 27, Paul exhorts about uh, preaching the whole counsel of God. That means that there's nothing left. I mean, Paul teaches Ephesians about the whole counsel of God. Is that he, uh, he admonishes, he advises, and he imparts and reveals, exposes certain things. So when the murmuring spirits come, trying to create certain incertitude, doubts in your life, so that we can always seek the counsel of the Lord, take it to the throne room of God, on your prayers, on your knees, just ask him, Lord, I have heard this murmuring, I have heard this negativity, and somebody is trying to instill that in my life, and what can I do? So the whole counsel of the Lord, when you seek it in the proper manner, the Lord will impart it to you. So let's take on the second, uh, the spirit is the Hittites. The Hittites, uh, the characteristic of the Hittite spirit is the fear of men instead of God. So if you read Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2, there's a spirit of the fear of the Lord. So the fear of God. So quite the opposite is what the evil spirit is trying to do. You adore men, you adore uh, human beings, the creation than the creator. What you should be afraid of is the creator. What is actually the fear of God? On the day that you line up before the Lord and just Lord will ask you questions. Son, daughter, I have given you this much of talent, this much of privilege, this much of favor in your life. What have you done with your the gift that I have given. What have you done in order to fulfill the mission, the great commission that I have assigned to you to do? Have you taken care of the poor, the needy, the meek, the humble? Have you taken care of the widow? Have you been generous? And if you don't have answers before the Lord in that on that day, that's the Lord has the authority to put you to Hades. Where a worm does not die, the fire never quenches, the thirst never quenches, the fire never goes out, and you continue to burn. So that's of course is the fear of the Lord. So the fear of the Lord is found in Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Second Timothy chapter 1 verses 7 For God has not given us a spirit of fear, 
but of power and of love and of a sound mind so god has not given us a spirit of fear there you go it's very simple i mean to be afraid of men to be afraid of to be afraid of creation lord has not given us a spirit of fear he has given us a spirit of boldness boldness in his spirit not by my might not by my strength my ability or what i have and whom i know what i know of the qualifications no he has given us a boldness to seek him by his strength by the strength of the holy spirit and overcome them. so that's the fear of god so when you have when people instill certain fears about men i mean if somebody tells you okay if you do not worship that individual or literally or figuratively it could be any religion it doesn't matter if you don't worship if you don't revere if you do not honor go on your knees wrath will come upon you and you will have to bear the repercussions and the persecutions no no my dear brothers and sisters it doesn't happen like that because our lord god is the only one whom you shall serve and you whom you shall worship nobody else not a creation it's there very clearly mentioned in the bible so it doesn't matter when people instill certain fear about certain things objects ornaments certain places and when fear is instilled upon uh, a man or a woman doesn't matter because the lord has not given us the spirit of a uh, fear and not to be afraid of the lord has given us a bold spirit so in such a situation take heart take courage go on your knees and say lord the mountain or the challenge or the person who sits right in front of me or stands in front of me i shall not be afraid of course you need to be compliant and uh, docile to the authorities the lord clearly says authorities need to be the rulers the law of the country and whatever the ethics we need to abide by that that is 100% that we need to do as law abiding christians but we shall not need to be afraid of human beings and necessarily of the fear which is instilled that it shall come to us as a repercussion or a punishment or something. the country's rules the ethics the, uh, the what we need to do in order to maintain peace and harmony just please do abide by i'm talking about a different kind of fear that people often try to instill in people in order to to exploit innocent people so such fears that you shall not need to be afraid of take heart god has not given us the spirit of fear he has given us a spirit of boldness strength courage then let's talk the third talk about the third uh, uh, spirit that comes on our way the parasites so parasites as i mentioned seeks unguarded cracks unguarded opportunities where that you leave uh, a door ajar half closed so that the spirit can always walk in and uh, start uh, infiltrating your life and intimidating your life and uh, take over the whole of your affairs and uh, slowly but steadily destroy so the the spirit of parasites is that often it happens because that we do not have a proper understanding as to how to guard ourselves we do not have an un- proper understanding how the world works when a person comes and approaches us we may not have an understanding proper understanding as to uh what uh how to respond but in which manner or what manner that we should reciprocate because it's lack of understanding due to the main reason of lack of understanding that we may perish that we may keep certain doors open in our lives it could be a teaching coming from somewhere it could be something that we have read against which goes against the bible sometimes it's so subtle 
it may be it may sound so biblical that we may be hugely vastly dis, uh, misguided as well. so it's a very subtle it's a very uh, a sensitive matter so lack of understand but what does the bible say about understanding as isaiah 11 verse 2 says the spirit of understanding and in first john chapter 5 verse 20 it says 1 john chapter 5 verses 20 and we know that the son of god has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son jesus christ this is the true god and eternal life the son of god has come to give us understanding that is our lord jesus christ has come in order to give us understanding so that is through the holy spirit which is imparted is the spirit of understanding so if you believe in our lord jesus christ go now and eat and just ask lord give me discernment give me understanding how to interpret this situation how to how to react and what should my uh, reaction be what should my response be and if we if we ask the lord for that understanding of the spirit we can uh, surely close the cracks at the doors that we open on the parasites spirits so that's a sure way of overcoming believe me i have tried it i have succeeded and that's why i can share this with you there are certain cracks so whenever there was cracks open in my life as i'm we have there's a friction against the world so whenever that i encounter that i have a clear understanding i take a step back without rushing into any decisions i take a step back and ask the lord give me the understanding and discernment the spirit of discernment in other words in order to properly uh, understand the situation and what should i do in order to overcome it so the most important thing is when you are encountered with a challenge like that is not to rush in or to act in haste but to take your time take the matter to the lord and ask seek his understanding so that it will fall upon you as well so we we'll go to the the fourth spirit the canaanite spirit it is always concerning the carnality this canaanite spirit is always about you know making a profit give 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 in proverbs as i mentioned leech has two, two sisters that is to give 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 so carnality the canaanite spirit so the carnality is also a result of lack of knowledge lack of knowledge of our god who our god is our carnality springs forth certain propensities cravings in our life so that we go and do certain chickenery things that which are not of god which are abominations to our god in order to be rich so there are a lot of uh get rich uh, quickly or soon and get rich fast schemes and a lot of people preach about come to us that we will tell you from the bible itself how to get rich how to build your businesses and to developing and fostering spawning a feeling a sense of carnality in your life so when sense of carnality uh starts springing in your life where does the word of god how does the word of god spring up its fruits it is impossible because the more carnal you get more zealous the more propensities that you get more attachments to the world and the more you get and still not enough so that means it is without a proper knowledge of what our lord can do so it's the knowledge of god which can the spirit of the knowledge of god which can overcome help us overcome the carnality or the canaanite spirit that we may encounter in our lives is very abundant right now it's very uh, common right now the whole world is on a rat race to earn money and everybody is uh, worried about this and that and how to get this how to buy the latest car how to buy uh, how a big mansion how to get rich soon quickly in a jiffy 
no patience, especially the younger generation, sorry to say, my brothers and sisters. Everybody wants to get rich fast. And there's a lot of carnality in that. And there's no, uh, on the opposite side of it, then, that's about getting rich, but on the opposite side, what about the physical carnalities that people foster, young and the old alike? So how much of desires are burning in human beings? of the young generation right now. You can see the music videos, any drama or any movie, how much of carnal appetite is created or dished out because we don't have the proper knowledge of what our God can give us. The peace, his strength, his counsel, and his knowledge that can overcome all this we do not have an understanding. So that's why in Proverbs 1 7 it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge. So when, when, when a person is enticed to do something carnal, maybe to do some chickenery, to do oil the palm of somebody to get something done in order to get the work done faster. So get rich soon or get rich quickly get rich in a jiffy uh, schemes, but don't knowing that you are breaking the law of the country and fizzling out money from one country to the other in manners that the law does not permit, that's carnal. And we are breaking the law. Lord says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And if you try to get rich soon by overriding the set rules and conditions of the country, that's carnal and you are guilty conscious and you are not afraid of God. You are not afraid of the Lord in that manner. And you do not, you are not afraid of uh, his judgment. That means according to Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is no longer there. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge. So it's important when, whenever that we are enticed, Whenever that there's a propensity looming in us to understand that, is it from the Lord? Is it carnal? Do I have the fear of the Lord in order to ask His counsel and might? What is His idea about what I'm going to do? A business deal? I'm going to get this much of profit. Is it legal? More than it's legal, is it endorsed by the Lord? Is it according to the biblical principles? Will the Lord be pleased if I give my one-tenth or the ten uh, tithe of my profit? Will he be pleased? So we need to ask this question to the fear of the Lord. So I'll move on to the next uh, spirit, is the Hivite spirit. The Hivite spirit is, as I mentioned, as we went through in detail, is the conflict with the kingdom of God of his kingdom, of his teachings, of his righteousness, is what the Hivite spirit is all about. So how do we overcome the Hivite spirit? Hivite spirit is always the uh, conflict. That means you're fighting against the kingdom of God. There's an effort there to fight back. But how can you fight a mighty God? In Exodus, in Psalms, in Isaiah that we have seen, the mighty hand of God. There are numerous. The whole Bible is about the mighty hand of God. That he saved with his mighty right hand. His hand is not shortened. There are various exceptions and various uh, uh, Bible verses that we can read the whole, throughout the whole Bible about the might of our Lord. So against the almighty, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent Lord. How can you come against the kingdom of God, driven by carnality, driven by the Hivite spirit? So it's a futile attempt. Every day these people, those who have this spirit, will have a, a revolting, a recalcitrant, an obstinate spirit in order to fight against what is good of the Lord. 
Believe me, my brothers and sisters, there have been many times even in my life that I have just raised my hands up up into the heaven and I asked the Lord, Lord, I don't need you. Such were the excruciating pains of the troubles that I had to go through. So then at one point I said, why do I need to go through all this? I don't need you. I just threw my towel. I just said no. But in such a situation, the Holy Spirit gently whispered in my ears. I remember it. Son, try to forget me. I'm pretty sure you may have experienced the same as well. Try to forget the Lord. You cannot. Even if you go to the highest mountain, He's there. Even if you make your bed in Hades, He is there. Even the evil, the devil, the demons need him. So how Lord is everywhere as we are speaking. So the, against the might of his mighty power and might of the Lord, we cannot fight. So whenever the white spirit uh, tries to bother you and says uh, the kingdom of God is like this, but there is an opposite reaction. Every action has a reaction, as an opposite equal reaction, so that what is good and evil also can give you the same thing. Yes, evil ones also can do mighty miracles, but none like our God who consumes by fire. So let's move on to the, the Jebusite spirit. So the Jebusite spirit is always about defiling the body. Doing against what the Lord has told you to do. Defile in the body, body, soul and the spirit and cast down and destroy. And in order to overcome that, we need to have proper wisdom. So in Isaiah 11, 2, Lord also talks about the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom of the Lord. In James 1, 15. James chapter 1, verses 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. The Lord exhorts, the, ask God for wisdom, and he shall give it to you generously, if you lack wisdom. So a lot of people lack discernment at the same time, they, are, they don't have a proper understanding, they don't have proper knowledge, even my, me, myself included, I would say, all of us. And in certain situations in our lives, we may lack wisdom as well. So when we lack wisdom, my brothers and sisters, all we need to do is, it's not a pricey thing. It is a very priced jewel, yes. But if you are in Christ, it's a matter of just going down on your knees and asking the Lord, Lord, give me wisdom in order to overcome this situation. Give me discernment, understanding and knowledge how to overcome this. Give me the might to fight against it. Give me wisdom how to respond and how to act when to keep my mouth shut, when to open. This is the wisdom that enabled Solomon. He asked for the right reason. He asked wisdom for the right reason, which enabled Solomon in order to uh, have a fructifying, a prosperous kingdom. Because he asked wisdom in order to judge the mighty uh, children of Israel. Nothing else he asked, but the Lord gave more. We go back to uh, Joshua 15, 16. Let's just read uh, a few verses. I'll skim through and I'll just explain uh, in the interest of time. Joshua chapter 15, verses 16 to 19. And Caleb said, He who attacks Kirjath Sefer and takes it, to him I will give Aksa, my daughter, as wife. So Othniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb took it, and he gave him Aksa, his daughter, as wife. Now it was so, when she came to him, that she persuaded him to ask her father for a field. So she dismounted from her donkey, and Caleb said to her, What do you wish? She answered, Give me a blessing. Since you have given me land in the south, give me also springs of water. So he gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. In Joshua 15, 16, we have a lovely story. Now, Caleb 
has been given a portion of land in uh, in Israel. He makes an announcement. He said, there is this land called Debil, and whoever fights and gets it, I will give my daughter, Aksa. So, Othniel stooped up to the challenge and fought against whatever the tribe that was in Debir and conquered Debir. And Othniel's grand prize was the wife he got, that is uh, Caleb's daughter, Aksa. But look at in the subsequent uh, uh, paragraphs that what did Aksa ask? Of Neil on the day that they met. Ask my father for another favor. And Othniel backed away from it. After fighting, he thought, okay, he must have thought, okay, it's too much to ask Caleb about. But Aksa mustered up courage and asked her father, Caleb, give me springs of water. She was bold enough to do it. Respectfully, she asked, dismounting from the donkey. You can continue to read. As the Lord revealed this to me, and I'm just sharing this with you. Look how humble she was. And number one, she asked her husband. Husband didn't do anything about it. And she went straight away to the father directly and asked for springs of water. And not only Caleb gave her uh, springs of water, but the upper section and the lower sections of it as well, more than what she asked. So the underlying story behind Aksa's ask about the land which was won over by her husband, Othniel, is that although the land has been won over, that land didn't have any water. So that's the wisdom. So she had immense wisdom, say, so how can we thrive in this land? One thing is to fight and get it is another thing. And it's another thing to live in this land and to make it prosperous, to make it useful, so we don't have springs of water. Mithoth Neil may not have element and the wisdom in order to uh, uh, comprehend it. So Aksa had it. So there you go, the wisdom of the Lord working in Aksa. So in the same manner, now this happened Literally, Aksa going to Caleb and asking the father directly about the springs of water. And in the same manner, we can also go to our father, our Abba father, and ask for anything that we want. As long as it is righteous, as long as it is the right thing, not to destroy, bring fire and destroy a group of people whom we hate. Not to bring fire from heaven and destroy your neighbor, no but for the right reason, fair reason, justifiable reason, the Lord will honor it. That's the wisdom that we need to have in order to ask our Lord. So then we come back to our seven spirits. The last one we discussed last week is about the Gurgashite spirit. The Gurgashite spirit, as I told you, is always waiting to make you go back on your old self creating a picture, reminiscing, giving you the smells and the tastes of what you used to do so that to draw you back. We went in detail, but I'm not going to reiterate. So how can you overcome the Gagachai spirit? Although it's the last but never the least, in Isaiah 11 verse 2, the first spirit the Lord expounds is the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord in order to renew you, to refresh you all the time. Because Lord Jesus said, when the Spirit has come, He will reveal things. So there's something fresh that fell upon uh, the, those who were on the upper room. Something fresh that fell upon them as fire upon their heads. And it's a fresh beginning. It's a refreshing of times, the body, soul and the mind. So the Gurgashai spirit always tries to go, draw you back, but the spirit of the Lord always refreshes you when the spirit of the Lord come, comes upon you. So begin to love and ask for the spirit of the Lord. 
take care of the holy spirit talk with the holy spirit ask for times of refreshing so we discussed about the seven spirits that torment a human being and how to overcome those seven spirit with that of the seven spirits originating from our lord so let's make up a prayer a meaningful prayer to the lord a targeted prayer to the lord so that we know what we pray for what we ask for instead of just uh, rambling words instead of just using our words let's just make it more meaningful so let's pray thank you father for this understand for the revelation the rhema that you gave out of the purpose of your thank you father that you have also given us the warning the admonitions and the precautions of what trouble or what challenges that we may have to face but at the same time father you have not left us alone you have given us the solution as well in your holy scriptures how to overcome it father as we pray with my brothers and sisters when every time that they are conscious of having going through certain tribulation certain trouble of these spirits may us my lord be conscious of how to overcome it through the spirits originate from your throne room and how to overcome them by yielding to the spirits that emanate from the throne room of god father give us this understanding knowledge wisdom might counsel and the fear of the lord and the spirit of the lord to rest upon us all the times in our lives in everything we do in the mighty matchless powerful name of our lord jesus christ of nazareth i pray amen